written after your passing in that time was to try and stop that consciousness from evolving, like that yeah. controlling type of um, belief system that's been placed in the Bible and so on. Yeah, it happened slowly. What happened was that uh, obviously all of the people who were my friends who were with me before I passed, obviously they, they could remember most of the teachings that I taught them. And by now they'd received some divine life into their hearts. And so they, they were able to then reteach those teachings to others with the correct understanding. But what happens obviously over time is they eventually died. And, okay. and the people who followed them often were in their intellect rather than in their heart. And so they would then modify the teachings to suit their intellect. And so by the time uh, 300 years came along when the Bible was actually formulated, all of the writings of the earlier times were often dismissed if they were heart-based and only accepted if they were intellect-based. And so that's why a lot of the content of what happened when I was in the first century teaching was lost. And, and a lot of the content of what happened when the followers who were teaching after me uh, were teaching was lost as well as a result of that. What happened was that the Constantine, um, who wanted to, to solve this problem of the destruction of half of his empire, because by this stage half of his empire was Christian, and they were still murdering them. And there were now big wars between so-called Christians and so-called other you know, pagans. And none of them, of course, following any of the principles at all. But, uh, but by this stage he was trying to amalgamate his empire again, regain, regain the power. And so he had 70 or so ministers or, or learned men get together and determine what should be in the Bible and what shouldn't be there. And when they, when they did that, um, a lot of what got into the Bible was to do with what they could accept and what was to support their power base. So all of the women-based things all got kicked out, of course, because you know there was this still male domination thing going on. A lot of uh, the writings that uh, my own soulmate, after my passing, channeled a lot of writings that I've channeled to her of teachings. But a lot of those got destroyed and, 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 and even now um, haven't been made known. And so, and so a lot of the teachings that we were taught back then were lost as a result. And that's one of the reasons why I'd always wanted to come back to, um, to reteach those teachings in an environment where people would accept them. Um, but it wasn't until, the 60, uh, until this, century, this previous century, the, the 20th century, that we actually learned how to do that. So. so was your choice to come back to reincarnate? I'm, I'm not really sure about the understanding of reincarnation. I really thought that I was of the understanding that we all reincarnate. Yep. How many of you feel that we all reincarnate? Yeah. Yeah. Or that's what you were thinking before? Yeah. 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 Right. Um, I do want to get back to two and three here. <laughs> <laughs> When, remember, there's a, remember there's all these spheres, right? And the, all the spheres go up to the 20 seconds at the moment. To, the dimensional existences, the dimensional spaces that are light years apart from each other, separated by boundaries. The boundaries are actually vibrational love boundaries. In other words, how much love is in my soul determines whether I can go through one of those boundaries or not. If there's not enough love in my soul, I cannot get through that boundary, no matter what I do. I can't will myself there, I can't make myself get there, unless there is an amount of love in my soul that allows me to get through that boundary. Right? Now, what happens in your progression is you've got the two halves of the soul progressing. Remember, you've got the male half of the soul and the female half of the soul progressing. As they progress, they go through this, the seventh, eighth fear transition. That's the transition where you become born again. Right? Or you, you experience what's called the new birth. The well, reason why I turned at that in the first century is because your soul changes in all of its capacities. So you know at the moment how you find it really hard to read another person's intention. Right? You, you find it hard sometimes to know whether they're lying to you, telling you the truth, telling you the whole truth, telling you half the truth, and all those kind of things. Right? But when you get into a state of being born again, your soul has the capacity to know that instantly. You know exactly when someone is telling you a half truth, a whole truth, when they're missing out things, you know exactly what they've just missed out, everything. And it can happen on earth. It can happen on earth. This is the state I was in in the first century. So it can happen on earth. That's the seventh sphere, eighth sphere transition. So that's 
the seventh, eighth. Now, both soul halves need to go through that transition and then progress in further truths. Now, all the progression through here from, this seventh, from the eighth sphere onward is all, you don't have any negative emotions doing it. So, you know how at the moment we're having to deal with negative emotions when we're progressing? We're only having to do that because we're so far away from love. But once we get into this state of abundance with God in love, once we make that transition, every single future transition you make in love is all just beautiful. You have no negative emotional experience after that. So that's a good thing to look forward to, isn't it? Anyway, what happens is the two of you keep growing and growing together and what happens here in the 20 second sphere state is you recombine as one being, one soul. Right? Now, we knew in the early 20th century, the, the early 1900s, we knew that that state was possible. We just didn't know how to attain that state. And it meant growing in love and truth to get to that state where myself and my soulmate got into that state first. Then shortly after, there were other people who got into the state. The next, next couple was a gay couple, what you call a gay couple. John, the Apostle John and his soulmate got into that state. And the next couple was what you would call a lesbian couple that got into that state, right? Elisha and her soulmate. And then the next couple was another heterosexual couple, what you would call here on earth, who got into that state. And eventually, there were seven souls in that state, right? Now, the first seven souls that got into that state all decided, and of course all your decisions there are made in harmony with God's love. So you also are in constant connection with God. So you know that it's also what God desires. Right? And we all decided that we wanted to come back and help the earth through this coming transition. And help all of the spirit world all change as well as a result of it. Because by the time you get to that state, it's very, very difficult for you to communicate with people in this state. Not because of your own desires, but because of them not being able to see you or hear what you're saying or understand it. Make sense? So you have to lower yourself to their state. When I say lower yourself, degrade what you look like and everything to their state before they'll even begin to listen. And then because you look the same as them, they don't listen. <laughs> <laughs> uh, elephant to an ant. <laughs> so you got to degrade yourself from like, like you could like Peter called it this morning, being an elephant to an ant, and then the other ant doesn't listen because he just thinks it, you're the same as him. <laughs> Does that make sense? Yeah. So there's a lot of things that inhibit them from actually accepting truth. Whereas when you reincarnate, you now have the ability to demonstrate by your own life how to get back into a state of abundance with God again. And you have the ability to channel all that truth that you already know is, that is in your soul. <clears throat> so all I'm doing at the moment is channeling to you all the truths of my experience. Right? That's all I'm doing, just telling you what I've experienced. It hasn't come from an external source, it's just been what I've experienced. And I have the ability to do that because I can remember all of that. And if I remember all that, it's easy for me to tell you. And now, because I'm here in front of you, it's a lot easier for, for you to hear it. Have the others that have re reincarnated, are they all over the world? Yeah. 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 Yep. There's two in Canada, there's two in uh, Barbados, there's two in South Africa, uh, there's, six, there's, four, there's three couples, six people here in Australia, and two who come from Vietnam. Okay. Are they so, all um, public like you? Or? No. Uh, any? Uh, yes, some are. But uh, you'll actually, you might meet one in the next, or oh, maybe not because we're travelling different, but there'll be, there'll be one in, on a videotape coming up shortly for you. Um, Cornelius, the man who, who nailed my feet to the stake, he's one of the ones who returned with us. And, uh, and he, he's going to be coming to some discussions in Brisbane in a few months' time. They're all in different states of emotional development and all in different states of personal fear. You imagine coming back, you're coming from a 20 second sphere state into the, like if you can imagine the trauma involved in that, there's huge amounts of trauma involved in that and huge amounts of emotions to work through as a result of that trauma. Then there's also the fear about being well known again and what might happen to you if you are well known and I've got to work through all of those issues emotionally as well. So there's quite a lot on their plate to work through. But there are a number or who, who you will meet over the coming months 
and uh, I've got uh, two, of, two of them who are my daughter and son-in-law, <coughs> Luke and Sarah, they'll come from Canada um, over the coming months, so you may see them on a tape or something doing some things. And, but you'll not see them yet in a condition of a one with God, because they're still working through <coughs> their emotional issues. <coughs> How did your parents attract you to them? Well, reincarnation is a bit different than incarnation. So incarnation, the parents attract. In reincarnation, the person who's reincarnated can choose everything. So I actually chose everything, including my parents. So the reincarnation process is totally different to the incarnation process. So the incarnation is a soul without emotion, pretty much? The incarnation is... Uh, sorry, hang on. The incarnation is the child that comes through... That when you reincarnate, everything that's in your soul there <coughs> is remembered. Okay. And then re-impressed through all the emotional filters of your parents. So you still get all the emotional damage, but in a more conscious way than what you would do if you were... In, it just incarnated the first time. Okay. There was a lady at the back there. Yes, I want to know how, how um, all these people that have been reincarnated, are they aware of one another and how did they become aware of one another? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I've, I've met the majority of them now. There's only two or three that I have not met because they're not ready to be met even at this point. Oh, so they're not aware? They're not aware. I'm aware of who some of them are that they are not aware of who they are. Does that make sense? And the reason why is that they are not ready to deal with their emotional state yet in some cases. But in terms of how I was led to all the others, it was through my own desires that led me to all of the others. Yeah. So Mary Magdalene, is she near you? She's still not aware or she's aware? She's aware. 